Okay, Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Listen carefully. So the rich young man, he runs up to Jesus. He gives him a title of honor. He says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus pounces on him for calling him good teacher and says, why do you call me good? There's no one good except for only God alone. And then Jesus goes into the preamble of advising him what to do by keeping the commandments. Um, and then the young man says, teacher, I have kept these commandments since I was a boy. What do we notice in that response? The young man has dropped the title good, simply calls Jesus teacher. Hence, he has understood that only God is good alone. Very significant. So what we have there is a real, what you call powerhouse verse, which shows that the title of good has been deferred to God alone by Jesus exclusively. The young man has understood that in the context because in verse 20, he drops the title good and simply calls Jesus teacher. Hence, he has understood that only God is good alone. I want you to just... You want me to, to, to deal with that? Yeah, I want you to do with Mark 10, 17. Okay, cool. So, uh, the common misconception with dealing with uh, Mark 10, 17 is, is, it seems like you're coming from the perspective that Jesus is denying to be good. Right? And so you're saying Jesus denies being good and says that only God is good. In the grand scheme of things, yes. Yeah. Not that he's not a good person, but in the grand scheme of things, whereas uh, he's deferring that title to the almighty God. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is where we would disagree because, right, obviously here he doesn't say that he's not good. He doesn't deny being good. He doesn't say he's not good. He doesn't say do not call me good. He just asks the question, why do you call me good? Only God is good, right? There's only one good and that's God alone. If Jesus is good, right, in the great scram uh, you know, grand scheme of things, then Jesus is God. There's only God is morally perfect, right? As human beings, we all sin. Angels are even uh, imperfect. But there's only one who is perfect, and that's God. So Jesus asking the young ruler the question, why do you call me good, is similar to his thought-provoking questions that he asks anyone that he's engaging with. And the man didn't understand what he was saying because what he's saying is it implies that Jesus is God and the man didn't understand what he was saying. So this is a common response Christians give. That's a rhetorical question. That what, what the, Jesus wants to do is to make the young man reflect who he really is by your explanation. However, note something. He doesn't say, do you know why you call me good? No. That by necessity, by English grammar, that would then necessitate that then the question would be posed as to why, you know, why you're calling me good? Then your explanation would make semantic sense. However, the point remains, by him deferring the title, exclusively giving that to God alone. Secondly, in regards to this rhetorical response you've made, when Jesus gives that young man the advice, he does not go away concluding, oh, now I get it, you're God Almighty. So the rhetorical nature of your response makes no sense whatsoever. So within the context, notice something in verse 20, this is the verse that Christians need to reflect upon. In verse 20, he drops the title good and simply calls Jesus teacher. Hence he's understood. Look, look what he's understood. That when I called him good teacher, Jesus pounced on me for calling him good teacher. And when he redresses Jesus, he simply calls him teacher in verse 20. Hence he has understood. Now, a further substantiation. Wait, are you gonna yeah. can I can I yeah. jump in here? Yeah, but let me just a bit because you because I listen on to what you said in terms of rhetoric. Yeah, but you're 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 saying a lot though. You gotta let me jump in at some point. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I appreciate it. So it's it's not simply just a, uh you're, you're you're now turning into a grammatical problem. As if, uh, that's that's right. yeah, that's what you're saying. As if Jesus saying, why do you call me good, does not make sense grammatically in him asking a thought-provoking question. Whether he says, do you know why you call me good? Or whether he says, why do you call me good? Both grammatically work with the question. It doesn't matter how, how he said it. Him saying, why do you call me good? It's still a thought-provoking question. It's, it's, hold on, let me, let me continue. Because he then continues, that you, like you, you're talking about the context. He continues to go on and says, tells him to sell all his things and sell all his, all his possessions and come follow him for his eternal life. That there's one thing that he lacks and he has to follow Jesus for his eternal life. Notice how this is also an expression of Jesus showing that he is the one who is good and he is the one who is the way for his, his eternal life. If he's, if he's following all the commandments, he said he's kept all the commandments from the beginning, right? Love your, love your mother and father. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't 
still, yada, 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 right? But then he says, Jesus says, there's one thing that you lack. In all of the commandments, I want to ask you this, Mustafa. In all of the commandments that he's keeping, and Jesus says there's one that he lacks, sell your possessions, then come follow me. What is What commandment is that tied to? Yeah, so in essence, what he's saying within the preamble of Mark 10, 17, is that what he's actually telling him after rebuking him for calling him good. So let me just deal with that point a bit before I address this singular point that you've made. So within the context, you're saying that grammatically it doesn't make a, a difference, but it does because in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 19 of the same account, because Mark is the first gospel for everyone's attention. When Matthew reads the same account, Matthew rearranges the word, which has got such a problem sitting thinking, why is Jesus saying that only God is good alone? So he then says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, why do you ask me about what is good? So he changes the statement into a question about generically what is good. That's Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 19, which changes the context of what Mark is saying in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Now, to substantiate your point about come and follow me, yes, because in, because it's not just enough. Because notice the question is, what must I do to get eternal life? So the eternal life is not just sufficient to keep in the commandments and doing good deeds. You have to go over and go. Like you Christians have come over from the US. Why? Because you think that you want to get close to Jesus and therefore you want to do extra work to get to attain well, that eternal well, life where you'll be guaranteed. So Christ is saying in that context, come and follow me. Maybe what what follow commandment me. is that tied to? So the commandment is simply tied to the fact that he says, Hear thou, O Israel, your Lord God, the Lord is one. Boom. Yeah. So if the commandment is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and you shall not, go, you know, worship any other gods, put nothing before me, no other idols, right? This man obviously had his possessions as his most adored thing above God. And so in order for him to obey that commandment correctly, he had to then go give it up for Jesus. No, no. no? What he had to, let me explain. What he had to do in this context, because the, the riches are an obstacle. Just imagine he's... Obstacle to what? I'll explain to you. Just imagine he's going around following Jesus. What's that? What does that follow mean? It simply means going forth and spreading the message to Jesus amongst the Jews. Where does he say that? I'll explain to you. Because when he says follow me, what does that mean? Like, are you going to literally just walk behind Jesus at every juncture? No. It literally means follow me because of the task that I'm setting forth for the other people, the disciples, to go forth, to proselyze to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Where does he say that? Well, within the because it's follow me. Okay, what does follow me ah, mean? Ah, we're in the context. Okay, what does follow me Beautiful. mean? Beautiful. It means, so when you follow Jesus, yes. you believe who he is yes. and you obey his word. Yes. You love him, you keep his commandments. One of the commandments is to believe that he is the son of God who came down to give his life as a ransom for many. You follow uh, Jesus and believe him. Yeah, so that's it, exactly. We're still, yeah, in Mark, yeah, we're still in Mark yeah, 10. But what I'm saying to you to negate that particular point, what is, the term son of God, are you Christian people here aware, which is the sad paradox of history, that the term son of God is defined in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. It says the following. It's defined? Yes, it says the following. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they too will be called the sons of God. So the term sons of God, ladies and gentlemen, is a ubiquitous title used for those who represent God. And we see this further alluded to other individuals, like in Luke 3.38, Adam is referred to as the son of God. Oh. We look at Exodus chapter 4 verse 22, um, Jacob is referred to as the son of God. And furthermore, of significance so now we're changing it to son of God. No, no because you because you no, are, I, I like where this is going yeah, I'm okay with it you're the one who defines son of God I'm just going to make it clear to everyone the Christian audience in particular that what does son of God mean so in John chapter 10 verse 33 Jesus says is it not written in your scriptures that you you mind if I snap this on you so, yeah so in John chapter 10 verse 33 Jesus is just does he really say to those Jews those obstinate Jews who are not written in your scriptures that you too are gods. So all it means that one who is referred to as a son of God is referred to as one who represents God. Now going back to the point of Mark Wait, 17. Wait, can I respond to that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. So you're now, so now you're trying to generalize sons of God, which then, if you acknowledge that God has sons in this sense, then you, what you have on your tent, three men, one message, you have just refuted that and, and now rejected that because according to Moses, according to two of those men, they have one message that God has sons in many senses. According to one of those men, God, Allah, doesn't have any sons. Has He's a father to no one in any sense. I hope you, yeah, you agree. Okay, good. So you're agreeing with that. So then what you're saying shows that Moses and Jesus, as you're quoting the Bible over there, Deuteronomy and Mark, uh, ironically, both in Mark and in, in Deuteronomy, both two of those men on your tent disagree with the message of Muhammad. So you just threw Muhammad under the bus no, and showed that how... I'm not going to... Okay, 
I'm gonna forget, forgive me. Yeah. So you, you just refuted Muhammad. I'll say you refuted Muhammad and showing that it's not three men, one message. It's two men, one message against a man who's against their message. But talking about the sons. Now, you, you understand in Mark, for example, you are you familiar with the story of the vineyard? Jesus' parable of the vineyard, right? Okay. Now, and you and who's the vine, who's the owner of the vineyard in the in the parable? Yes. It's it's God, right? Yeah. And the one his servants that he sends are the prophets. And then finally it says, Then I will send my son who I love, they respect him. Who's the son in that? Yeah, so the son in this context is referred to again as Christ. But the term son in Got itself, it. but the term son in itself, why, it's, listen gentlemen, this is not a why, why, why aren't the prophets? Yeah, why, why aren't yeah, well I wanted to just sorry, I wanted to substantiate this. Why aren't why did Jesus differentiate himself from the prophets by calling them the servants of the vineyard owner while he calls himself the beloved son who is the heir in the heir and inheritor of the vineyard owner. Yeah, so in terms of this t title, son, prophet of God, um, Messiah, these are all interchangeable titles. So hence, this is why you get other people who are referred to as sons of God. You got other people who are referred to as messiahs. You got other people who are referred to as saviors. So these are not titles just stick summarily to Jesus Christ. There are ubiquitous title for those who represent God. Hence you get these terms. Now what he's saying makes no sense because the Hebrews in chapter 1 of Hebrews it makes mention that in terms of the angels that Jesus was even higher than the angels. So it makes no sense within the context to say if Jesus is higher than the angels which God by default would be higher. So in this particular context in reference to what you have said if he's referring to him as a son he's just one who represents God. In, in reference God. to me, what? Yeah I'm just giving you that. No no so, how, do, how does Hebrews 1 about the angels relate to the parable of how the son is different from the prophets. How does that relate? Yeah, because what it says in Hebrews chapter 1 is essentially speaking that the angels, God, God has made the angels, but Christ is even higher than the angels. Right. So it makes no sense within the context of the chapter that you would then say such a thing, which is, already by, yes, which is already God's by default, that Christ would be higher than the angels, because that would already be given. Wait, wait, I, I don't understand the correlation though. Yeah. How, how is Christ being higher than the angels, which you're right, he is. How is that correlating in, to how Jesus separates himself from the prophets as the servants of God while he's the son of God. Yeah, because How does that correlate? Yeah, but these are still titles which are interchangeable. You can use either or titles. Why does he make a distinction between himself, it's between him and it's them? It's irrelevant because the term, listen, the term son of God literally means one who represents God. No, it these doesn't. Are, these are interchangeable. But it's okay, not though. So explain to me why in Luke 3, 38, it's Adam, the son but, of God. But, so, okay, because he's the first He's the first human created by God. So he, so he okay. is the son of God in the sense that he is God's creation. Right. Excellent. So yes. look, so in, that's in, your definition. Uh, well, in the no, in the Bible, it gives you different different contexts in which God has a son, in which who's the son of God? Adam being God's creation. Uh, he's he's uh, you know the so the Jesus, one the, Jesus creation as well. Well, no, he's not actually. Well, 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 he, well, he's not. He's, he's not. the firstborn of creation. Well, no, that that means that he's above creation. That means preeminence. No, it says he's the firstborn no. of the dead too. Was that was he the first one to yeah, die? Th yeah. No, that means. Okay. That, so not, wait, wait, that. no, no, stop, stop, please. When you say that he's the firstborn, uh, the firstborn of creation. You keep reading, it says, because by him all things were created in heaven, on earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, principalities, rulers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and he is the firstborn of the dead. So exactly. he's free. So first that he is free of the yeah, dead. Right. The and let me finish it. Yeah. So that his preeminence is shown above everything. Yes. So all of that firstborn is preeminence. It's not always the first little thing. Yeah, well, so in the context of the verse that you've cited, when it says all things came through him, that by definition shows he's not the source. In 1 Corinthians, listen guys, in 1 what? Corinthians... How is that true? Let me explain to you. In 1, and I'll define the first terms. 1 Corinthians 8, 6? Yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 6. Yeah. Paul says the following. Uh -huh. For unto us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things come, uh -huh. meaning the source. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, uh -huh. meaning he's the passive conduit. Okay. Well, let me explain because I'm asking yeah. your question directly in correlation because I'm giving a definition think, for the audience to understand as well. I so when all things are, like I'm you. not switching topics. What I'm trying to show to you, based upon the citation, citation you made from 1 Colossians 15, that when it comes you to this term, that all, yes, I quoted it, but then you substantiated it. So I'm giving you an understanding when you say oh, all things are made through him. This must make him God Almighty. But no, because in, uh, then I, I, didn't, cited, I didn't say that. You said no, you but you're the one who's citing that as evidence as well. In no, one, I didn't. You did. I never know, brother. You, you're okay, the one so you who Okay, let me get it straight. So you don't believe one Colossians 15 is no citing Jesus as God. Well, it's, you not, it's, not, it's not one Colossians, it's just Colossians, but yes. 
it does show that Jesus is creator along with the Father. However, but hold on, you said that you I just brought contradicted yourself. No, I didn't because you no. Listen, Mustafa, you said that I brought this up as a point. I didn't bring this up. I only answered you because you went to Colossians yes. chapter one That's to right. try to say that Jesus is also created. Yes. Because it says he's the firstborn of all Correct. creation. Yes. I corrected you and gave you the context of, of Colossians one to show you how actually it shows that Jesus is God and creator of everything along with the Father. But it, but then then what happened then when he says all things were created by means of him and through him by definition the Greek word there is called dia now dia means by the means of so God creates G all the universe by the means of Jesus right. as the passive conduit so, so that means, let, me, I, let, me, let me finish I mean that's, that's beautiful you're preaching one, the gospel no no now, I'm not man. preaching the gospel because, yeah, you are you're doing good this is, this is what you call you're without you even now. realizing there's a distinction between when something comes from something uh -huh. and something comes through I, something I, I, we all so understand it we're trying well, to well, I know, but that's the tragedy of the matter here. So when it comes, to, yeah, let me let me substantiate. So Please. when it comes, when something is from something, yeah. he is the source. Yeah. Okay. When something is through something, he uh -huh. is that conduit. Like Jesus says in um, uh, John chapter four, uh, fourteen, verse six, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come through to the Father, but by through me." Okay. So you have to get through. Um, uh, through He's the Jesus way, right? To yeah. God. Right. So what is the relevant point? I don't want this to become. I want people to focus yeah. somewhere early. So when one Christian Eight, first four to six, which is from, um, who from the Father. Came. So even he distinguishes in one Corinthians eight six that who is God, uh -huh. the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word kurios in the, in the in the verses before Paul says there are many you're, gods. You're going and, on too no, many no, points. No, I know man. because what I'm trying to do, I want people to reflect because you made the point by substantiating in one closing fifteen because all okay, things let, were let, made let's, fo let's focus on one thing though. Okay, no. so, so you're, the one thing that let, let's at least focus because you're like you're chopping up going. I'm everywhere. not chopping. I'm just trying to substantiate okay, the point. So, I, you, but let's stay focused, okay? Because you, you have a lot that you want to say. Let's stay focused. So let's deal with um, let, let's deal with the creation part. Okay, you said that Colossians proves that Jesus is created. Okay, when it says that he's the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created. By means right? of well, the yeah, Greek word is dia. Dia means by means so, of. But, yeah, so, not that he well, no, it is creator. by by him and through and for. It says all of those things. Let me ask you this, okay? By means of. Okay, okay, I got. I got you. Stop no, you there. no worries. Have you understood the difference? I, 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 listen. In the Greek, I'll, I'll go, the word is Mustafa, dia, I'll go, which means by I'll the go means with of. you. Yeah, that means by. But by. <laughs> but by the so, means of. That's, that's a laugh. It's, that's it's, a new. It's by. No, what you're trying to do is you're trying to use the New World Translation because you like to hing, hinge on Jehovah's Witnesses. But that I'm doesn't help you here. Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, you guys still that's have the That's the Greek. Go to the BibleHub.net. You still have the on there by means of the Greek word. I got you, Mustafa. But here's my question. So it's not by him. Here's my question. One second. No, no, no. This is my question. Cut me off. Home. Mustafa, gonna, you're cutting seconds. me off though. Give me, I'll give you full three minutes. To no, but I don't need three minutes. You know, I don't need three minutes. I'm going to say to you now. Listen I don't to need this. three minutes. It's a matter. The Mustafa, gentleman you're said cutting me off. By now. him, all so things now we're made. just going to get in the no, shouting no, no, match. Gonna it's going to degrade. He doesn't want you to hear what I'm saying. That's the question. Oh, you speak. Thank you. So no, so I don't need three minutes. I'm asking you a direct question. Okay, because you're trying to run from this. I'm not running. Okay, good. So when you admit that it says that that all things, the universe, right? The world. So all of creation. It says that. Oh, so, wait, wait, wait. In the Greek, oh, so ages. Greek, what does ages mean? The, what does ages mean? It means from the time. Thank you. So all time was... It doesn't say from the gotcha. universe. Wait, wait, time That's out. why you time use out. the word time universe. Time out, time so out. So it's through Jesus that time was created, correct? No, not through Jesus, no. No, no, hang on. Where are you going? Where are you walking away to? Oh, no. oh what, my what, word. You don't even know what you're talking here, about. Man. Oh, my God. What are we doing here? Okay, right. you, you just said that ages means time, and you just said that by means of Jesus... Ages means in the past. It doesn't time. Your, but what you're trying to do uh, is to try to show he was at the beginning of time. But that's, that's what you just said. I didn't say that. No. You're stuck, I though. said through the ages. Okay, what does ages mean? From the time that he came into existence. Wait, wait, okay, time out. All right, let's let's focus on that. It says by let's go with you. Yeah, yeah, go with By me. means of him, yes. all things were created. What are the all things? So that means the heaven that that's not the heavens and the earth. You know what this is it's about? It's not the heavens like, and the me, earth. You know what it's this is not about? The heavens and the no, earth. this is not the heavens and the earth. It's not the heavens you know, yeah. you know what this is about? Yeah. This is about the new creation, the new heaven, the new, uh, the new dominions, the foundation, the foundations. This is not speaking about the heavens and the earth. This is the new um, creation. Which That's is the new creation? Me. Yes. All right, all right. I got well, you. Let, me, let me finish. Okay, go let ahead. Me finish. Sorry. So what he said, people, you know, within the shouting, we can't really get then what is happening here. Yeah. So he said that Jesus is um, the firstborn of creation. Okay. This was your point. Now I said Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. How can God 
one day, one, one um, Timothy. You're changing Jackson, the I'm argument. Not, I'm not changing no You're argument. You're changing the I'm subject. Saying, no, this is you because you oh know. Oh my goodness. Because you know you are yeah, stuck yeah, big time. Right, right. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. So this, when he refers to the first born, according to James D. G. Dunn, a very eminent New Testament scholar, <laughs> he's written a book called the, um, uh, Chris, the the Evidence for Jesus. He states explicitly that um, this is in reference to the uh, the, uh, the the new creation in terms of when he ri rises again, the dominions and the and, and the foundations. It's not speaking about the, he the creation of the heavens, because in Mark's gospel, it says that God created the heavens and the earth. When Jesus says that, it doesn't say that he created the heavens and the earth. So that's distinguishing. Mark's gospel says Jesus no, is God. No, 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 listen, guys. So, listen, let me just wrap up. I'm going to give you a try. So, first of all, notice he said something in, in 1 Corinthians 15. But the term there is by, by him all things were made. So I then corrected him. And later, you can check it out. He's got it. He accepted it's by means of. So when you are the by the means of something, you are not the source. Or you, a, you, it's not from you that everything derives. So that's the first point. So I educated him on the Greek word there called dia. You sure did, buddy. Yeah, but you, you never you, knew. And then you afterwards, got... you accepted it's by I, the I, means I of. I love learning, these are I'm, subtle, I'm a layman. My friend, so am I. So these are my, I mean, the champ, I love uh, the champ is not here yet. So when he comes, he'll go on another level. Okay. But let, let me just say to you, so just to continue further. Um, so that Wait, Greek word can, is I, can by, I touch on yes, that now? I'm just going to finish off now. So, but I just want to summarize very quickly. You just so the dia by it, so by okay. him means by the means of, by the means not of. by him. So and it's through him, through meaning him. he's the passive conduit. Gotcha. Like in two in two feet, Philippians. You're going on again. No, I'm not because I'm substantiating my point. You already so did. Your we got it. Benefit. Look, the no, audience no, gets finish. it. It's by now, means now, of Jesus, you, right? Yeah, but so then I'm gonna substantiate further to you're, hammer that point home. No, you're in just two, making no, another I'm point. Not. It, what I'm trying to do is to show as my evidence is by the means of. Like for example, Mustafa, I'm with you. I'm gonna you. I'm gonna keep silent. I'm gonna keep silent. In two Philippians verses six to eleven. making another point. No, because it's to substantiate. You, you tell me let you finish. You're about to wrap up. I sit here quiet and then you make another point. No, no, because it's to substantiate the point. So you guys You've understand. You've already done. We get it. Everything, is everything made by Jesus or is he by the means of? We'll go so with, then when you we'll look go at the Greek, the means when you look at the, yes. We'll so, go with by the means But that's of. a big difference. Uh, it's really that's not. That's a huge difference. I'm going to show you how it's not. I'm going to show you how it's not. Hang on, let me substantiate okay. the point. Okay, substantiate what you just did. All think all things come by him. You're then implying that he is the source of Mustafa, can I solve that? that's the case by the means of. Can we engage? Can, yes. Okay, thank you. So you said that all things is not all things. Is that correct? Um, all things meaning that the heavens and the of uh, the new heavens and wait, the does new, it? Okay, the, let me ask you this. Does some, this you does asked it say, me a question. Uh, yeah, you, you just did it. Oh, I did does, does, oh, it say, <laughs> does it say that he by me by means of him all new things were created, or does it say by means of him? All things were created. Which one? Yes, yeah, so all is not mentioned in the generic sense. Oh, okay. Because sometimes all can be just, for example, in the Old Testament, okay. there's a reference where people are referred to as they all came and did God's work, but uh -huh. there was only a few select Jews who came to do God's work. Okay. So what it says within the context, Show me the all verse. is not always... What verse are you talking one about? One second, I'll come there. No, no, you got to substantiate it. Yeah, you like substantiate it. What verse are you talking about? I'll have to bring it up. Yeah, don't don't, don't talk about stuff no. you can't make okay, up. Fair you, can't. you can't remember okay. from every single verse. I remember as much as if, possible. If you're going to bring up something in this conversation, you got to have it. Fine, yeah. But you would be familiar with this understanding. I don't, that I, I don't know this. The word all does not have to be taken in the literal sense. So can you, can can you let me, sub, let give me, me sub, an example where all okay. creation doesn't mean all creation. Okay, I'll bring that for you. Well, it's not going no, around a circle because you're not dealing with the argument. No, I am dealing with the okay, argument. Okay, so when it's it says now, all I'm, things, does it say I've all new things? You. No, no, Mustafa, no, but does it say new things or all things? So when it says that he is the new creation, it means in terms of the No, no, does it say new or does it say all, Mustafa? Yeah, but all is irrelevant to this point. All I want to know is if it says all or does it say all new? Okay, so even if it's, listen. Listen, let me exp be patient. Let me. I was very patient. So, in that definition, in 1 Colossians chapter 15. Stop saying it, 1 Colossians, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, Colossians. Well, one, okay, 1 Colossians 15. It very, very clearly says that all things were made by the means of him, okay? And through is him. that all things or is that some things? That's all, all I want to know. Is, is within the context of the new creation. Wait, okay, 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 got you. All Beautiful. In the new it's creation. within the new creation. The, the new, I got the you. Dominions I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Beautiful. So, where? It's not reference to the. I got you. I got you. Okay. I got you. Creation. Where in Colossians 1 does it mention new creation? It's mentioned within the within the context. Where? Show me the verse. So it says that, that it makes reference. It will be in reference to the new foundations yeah, yeah. and the new dominions. Okay, good. Okay, okay let's new, have a look new, new dominions. Right, hang on, let's have a look. All at right. This. So he said he all. said that the verse in Colossians one is in context of new creation. Yeah, that's because it actually mentions the new creation. It actually mentions new dominions, means, new principalities. Exactly. That's when he comes. I got you, but exactly I got you, comes, Abibi. It's okay. not in reference to the creation okay. from the beginning. All right, Abibi. Where God created everything. In okay, got you. Let's let's see here now. Now, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. When we pull this up, let's see if he's telling the truth. So, Colossians chapter 1. Okay, go ahead. All right, all right, all right. 
right? Verse 15, this is what it says. He is the image of the invisible God, Amen. the firstborn of all creation. Amen. Maybe that's all new creation, right? Not all creation. He's the firstborn of all new creation? Yes. Okay, so not all creation. No, not from the, because in Mark's gospel, he said God created the heavens and he's the earth. He's the firstborn of Jesus all new did, creation. Jesus did, but in Mark's gospel, gotcha. it says that God wait, created wait, the heavens don't, and don't the earth. Wait, wait, don't run the mark now. Say, I created the heavens Don't create the, don't, don't, don't move away now. Well, the Father says that Jesus created the, new, the heavens and the earth. So it looks like the Father. No, he didn't say and, that. In Mark's gospel. Oh, yeah, in Hebrews. In, Hold on, I, let me see. In Hebrews 1, the Father says that Jesus is the Lord who created all things by His hands. Where and that by that in Hebrews, that, 1? Hebrews 1, chapter. Show me. Show me. Uh, uh, oh, man. I, me. I'm quoting it. Okay. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10. Okay. Look, look, I got you. I got you. Excellent. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. I'm very 10. familiar with this. Good, so this is going to be, this is going to be a dagger It says, you. This is what the Father says to the Son You, Lord, laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Wow. Okay. But didn't Jesus say in Mark? That the that the Father is the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. So, so it looks like it looks like both the Father and the Son glorify each other as the source of all creation. No, they don't. That's because called biblical literacy. That's how you know how to read. Right. You must so, read. You must. Well, wait. Let me finish this because I don't want us to get away from it. You know what I'm saying? So look, Hebrews one. He said it mentions new creation. Let's see. That's in Colossians one. Colossians one. Yeah. Yeah. Colossians one. Hebrews one. I didn't say that. Well, if I said that, I misspoke. My bad. All right. Um, okay. So he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him, or with him, by means of him, all things were created. Not all new things, all things were created. Now, it gives us in detail, because he said it doesn't create the, the heaven and the earth. Let's see what he created. What, what, what are all things um, that are in heaven? <laughs> Wait, you're not supposed to say that, Paul. You're supposed to say the new heaven, Paul. Created all things that are in heaven. And he didn't say, he said not the new earth. He said not earth. And that are on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions, principalities or powers. Watch this. All things were created through him and for him. Yes. Sir. We're here. We're, okay, hold on. And he is before all all things and in him all things hold together without him creation falls apart that's in Jesus so how is he not where, where, where does he mention new creation here I, I need to see where it so mentions it refers new to, creation it refers to principalities and dominions does it mention new is, principalities yes it does because where? Within, hang on within the context this is referencing but that he's the first born from creation that that one minute, let me finish the point so by necessity God is not first born does that make sense? He is. God, he is. God is firstborn. Yes, he is. My, it, no, no, Almighty do, do you God, know what that means? Hang on, wait a minute. Almighty yeah. God who is immortal. Yeah. Who has got no beginning, He's no first end. Born. Hang on, who has got no beginning, yeah. no end. Uh -huh. Yet you are saying Jesus is the firstborn. Yeah, absolutely. You, and I'm going to show you your ignorance here. The reason why you're surprised by that is because you don't know the Bible. I know for the example, Bible pretty well. Yeah, for, okay, you know the Bible? Okay. So, That's why you want to debate okay, me. Good, okay, good. You don't want to debate okay, good. How many, how many brothers did David have? I don't know how many brothers. Oh, you didn't, oh, but you know the Bible. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to show you how it's consequential. That's not consequential. Okay, was David the oldest, middle, or youngest? I don't know. You don't know. I'm going to help you. That's irrelevant okay. to the point. There was eight of them. I'm going to tell you, yes. okay, I'm gonna show you how. Right, on, yeah. There was eight of them. There was eight of them. David was the youngest. Now, in Psalm 89, verse 27, God says about David, You are my firstborn. Huh. Wait, hold on a second. David's the youngest. So how is it that David could be the first? born, Mustafa. Precisely. Good point. That's the, that shows that the Bible is a bundle of contradictions. In Exodus, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, Israel, or Jacob, is referred to as the firstborn. Okay? So what this is what this is within the context that they are all over the place. In terms of, is, is Jacob the firstborn? Or is it David is the firstborn? Make your mind up. Or is it Jesus is the firstborn? It's easy. Look, Mustafa, if you knew the Bible, you, would need, you wouldn't even be making this mistake. This I, is going to be I embarrassing. The Bible. It's not okay. embarrassing. Okay. Okay. It is. Embarrassed by I, the means I got of. you. you so, so, th so this is what it means. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> so this is what it means. Firstborn is a title of preeminence, supremacy. So yes, God is firstborn because He's supreme over all creation. Duh. So when Jesus is called the firstborn of all creation, He's the supreme one of all creation. It just makes that's Him sense. adding into it. You know what I'm saying? That's Him 
adding so, his, underst his premeditated understanding. Okay. So By what, definition, according to James D. G. Don, don't argue me. The top New Testament. What does it, where scholars, does it say new? He's, what does it say new? He's making reference that it's in terms of the new creation, the new principalities, where? the new foundations. It's when he returns. Hence, where? hence it says he's the firstborn. You see, from the dead. Doesn't it say? Let me explain to you. When they say he's the firstborn from the dead, what does that tell you? That means that on on his return, when he has yeah, within the context, he's telling you where because you know why? Because he's telling you the new the principalities. The he doesn't say new. Why do you keep throwing no, new? No, in? But it's because so, look, I'm gonna give you my phone. Okay, Show so me the word new. Okay, so when you're when you're first no 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 here, no, here. No, sorry don't worry don't worry about the melodrama. If when you're talking <laughs> about the first, the term firstborn by necessity and it, it's understood to be in, in Revelation, he's referred to be the firstborn from the dead. I think I was reading it yesterday in Revelation chapter. It's also uh, it's also right here chapter, in Colossians. Yes. It's okay. It's right so here when you're firstborn from the dead, uh -huh. so what does this mean then? It means you're preeminent means, over those who raised no, from no, the dead. No, 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 why you should okay, be called. It's within the context. Within the context. Mustafa, at, where? Second, within the context, in Revelation chapter one and in Revelation chapter five, it makes mention that he's the firstborn from the dead. Does anybody okay, have let, me, let me finish. Let me finish, please. So I can't this, see the word new here, bro. Uh, but it's in ref. The context determines that. The where? Context is determining it. Show me the passage because listen. I don't, I, this is just going around in circles. Listen. When you are when you are dead. When you are when you have died. When you're the firstborn from the dead. What which is Jesus is according to Christians. You all believe that, don't you? Yes. Right, he's, right, yes. Excellent. So by definition, if he's the firstborn from the dead, in this particular context, it's referring to the new dominions, the new. Where? Hang on, let me. The new dominions, the new um, uh, principalities. What are those principalities? So when he comes and rules upon um, uh, upon mankind and judges according to what God has revealed to him. So it's in that context it is making reference to. And why am I saying that? Which we've been going around in too many circles. Is that when this is the, the definition in Revelation? Is that he's the first born from the dead? He then comes and then he's then he has that new creation. That, that who is that new creation? Those who will follow him. Those who he will have the principalities and the dominions that he will rule upon. Because we know Jesus did not rule at the time that he was there. He only ruled at this when he returns. So within the context of this, and this is not me saying it. James D. G. Dunn, one of the greatest New Testament scholars of the 20th century. Okay, I would like to see that quote from J. D. Dunn that says exactly what you said. So this is where we get. Well, I, I guess we can end it because you said it's going in circles. I'll say my point. You just said yours. Yeah, good point. Um, guys, uh, you, you guys can see what what it does, what happens to you when you don't read the Bible. Um, you see what happens to you when you can't read context, and you see what happens to you when you're you know you get a little too ahead of yourself and you start saying things that doesn't end up in the Bible. This is why you get embarrassed on camera when you say things that you can't prove. You just can't prove it. Don't say, hey, oh, it's talking about, oh, it's new creation. If you no, Notice how, first of all, guys, I wasn't even the one that brought this up. He came here. He had the nerve to come to Colossians 1 to try to prove that Jesus wasn't God when it calls him creator it's of heaven and earth. It's oh, but now, oh, it's oh not, my God. It's, it's not, it's all, not all of creation. It's talking about the ages. What does ages mean, Mustafa? Times. Oh, so Jesus created the times? He so all of time came into existence through Jesus? So even just say, for example... Wait, did I interrupt your summary? And this might, let me cook, man. Let me cook. Let me cook. Let me cook. Goodness. So he came here, and it shows, brother, how you butchered your position by coming to a, to a verse that shows that Jesus is divine, Jesus is creator, and Jesus is su supreme over all of creation. There isn't even a question about it in this verse. You got yourself in trouble. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, how did we get here, though? We got here because he wanted to run away from how Jesus distinguishes himself from the prophets. He tried to say that son of God is just a general term, that anybody is a son of God, which in, a, in some sense, he actually does have a case that son of God.
God, there's many senses that you can be sons of God. Angels are sons of God. Adam was a son of God. Prophets are sons of God. Kings of Israel are sons of God. Israel the nation are sons of God. Sons by the tons. But there's something that Jesus says. He says that God sent his son into the world, his only son. His only son. That you should, that the world should be saved through him. Wait a second. Why does Jesus say he's the unique son, the only son, when he has many? Why does Jesus make a distinction, which he didn't answer, by the way, in Mark 12, where Jesus says that God sent his prophets. They killed his prophets. They murdered his prophets. They disrespected his prophets. Then the owner says, you know what? There's one more. I'm going to send my son. Wait, Jesus, we're all sons. You're just a prophet like them. You're all sons. Why is it that you're making this distinction? Because there is a, a true distinction that Jesus is the son of God in the sense that he shares the same divine essence as God. He is the son of the father, eternally begotten from the father's essence, full of grace and truth, which is why there's none like him, which is why he's the unique son of God who came into the world. He's different from the rest. There ain't nobody like him. Not Moses, not Abraham, not Muhammad. It's only Jesus. And that's how we got here. So, are you finished? Yeah. Well, let me finish up. Let me just. You finish. did. I have. I didn't make a summary. It's yeah, you a, did. That's a conclusive summary. Let me make a summary as well. Okay. So notice, everybody, what did we establish over here? When he cited one Colossians 15. Stop saying he, one Colossians. Yeah, okay. It's just oh, Colossians make a chapter one. Let me, okay. Just keep, right. one Colossians 15. What did he say? He said that everything was made by Jesus and for Jesus and through Jesus. So I then said to him, and he admitted afterwards. It's all been recorded. I said the Greek word there is dia, which means by the means of. It's a big distinction. But it's not, he is the, he's the source. So then he afterwards, what did he say? He said, yeah, by the means of. He didn't say no, by him. It's a big difference. But if you're doing something through someone, or if you're doing something by yourself, that you can then make that claim. So he exceeded that point without even realizing, and we're very fortunate. What? that With that, so one minute, and we're very fortunate. This has been recorded for everybody's attention, for the genuine people. Second point, when we went through 1 Colossians 15, which I brought up initially to substantiate a particular point, it was to show that when Jesus returns, because it says that he will be the first born from the dead, and I've cited Revelation, which he accepted. He accepted in Revelation, he's referred to as the first born from the dead. So it's in this context that when he returns and he will be um, the ruler over the principalities and the foundations and the, this new earth which will be presented to him. What is this new earth? This new earth is when he returns. It's not because in Mark's gospel, he says that, um, uh, in Mark, I think it's Mark chapter 3, when he says that um, God created the heavens and the earth. He didn't say, and I created the heavens and the earth. So that distinguishes between the two. And the, la and the other point that he made, and I'll wrap it up very quickly, the term son of God. Now he's making a, um, a pre-assumption that the term son of God necessitates that Christ is a distinct and unique son of God in a way which is not the case as you would find in the normal context of things. I cited Luke 3.38, where Adam too is referred to as the son of God. In, in, in Exodus chapter 4 verse 22, Jacob is also referred to as the son of God. So the son of God is defined in Matthew chapter 5 verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they too will be known as the sons of God. So the term sons of God is a ubiquitous title for those who represent God. Then he cited the term son of God in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so ever loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, let's deal with that. The term there is used is genes, which is unique. And we know Jesus came as a... No, it's not monogamous. It's not in there. No, it's not. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. So, Are you making your final so point? I, yeah, I finish my summary, guys. Yeah, just, yeah, so, just because I, I kept quiet while she was speaking. So anyway, so the point now we, we got to understand is, yes, he's unique in the sense that he was born of, um, uh, of a virgin birth. But it doesn't necessitate that he's unique in terms of being a son of God, being a literal son of God. Because I've given you the definition. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they too will be called the sons of God. So whoever does God's work is referred to as the son of God. My very last point, it goes back to Mark 10, 17, which is where the conversation started initially. So when a young man, if for example, it, 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 all of us are over here. If I was to say Avery is the only person from the United States that by default would exclude us. So when Jesus says in Mark 10, 17, why do you call me good? There's no one good except for God alone. He's excluding that title to himself by just English grammar. Look, he's, he's it's a deference of title to God alone. And to substantiate the point, 
30 seconds of Lamar playing, in which um, he says in, in verse 20, the young man then says to him, teacher, I've kept these commandments since I was a boy. What does this mean? That means to show that he's understood. Whoa, Jesus told me off for calling him good teacher. So in verse 20, when I redress Jesus, I simply call him teacher. Hence, he has understood that this is a title exclusively for God alone. Wrapped up beautifully, and 10 seconds, John 17, free. For this is eternal life, Jesus' is the formula, that they may know you as the only true God, Ooh. and whom you have sent. The is that the Father? The Apostelios. Is that Jesus the Father? Christ. Go to the BibleHub.net, John chapter 17, is, verse 3. Is that, is that the Father? He's referred to as a messenger sent by God. Is that the John, Father? God is the only true God. Is that the and Father? He, yes. So and it ain't he, Allah. So he, so he, and anyway, we can do, I know you, you like to speak about the term Father. Well, just so, so I don't want to check So, okay, guys. So, so we finish, on, we finish the conversation over here. We had a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable conversation. So I hope catch, everybody has understood. Among, yeah. So amongst all of the um, come on, that man. Oh man. So no shaking of hands. Um, but man, what a good discussion. I love that he came out and actually had the guts to talk. The rest of the guys didn't. They didn't have the guts to talk. But he came. We had to force him to come and have a guy to bait him in a conversation. And uh, now he's just saw the hypocrisy of Islam. It's Islam is peace and love, but they can't even shake our hands of the of the disbeliever. So, but it's all good, man. Were you guys blessed by the conversation? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. That's amen. That's right. Christ is King, y'all. Yeah. Christ is King, y'all. Yeah. That's right. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua.